Pterygium. The word pterygium in Latin indicates a wing. So it is a wing-shaped fold of the conjunctiva that encroaches upon the cornea from either side within the interpalpable fissure. So this is the eye and upon this will be the cornea. So this is a wing-shaped fold of conjunctiva that encroaches upon the cornea from either side within the interpalpable fissure. So the pterygium can be the nasal side or even the temporal side. The etiology. This disease is more common in people who live in hot climates such as exposure to sun that means ultraviolet rays, dry heat, high wind and abundance of dust. So this is the etiology. Coming to the pathology, the pterygium is a degenerative and a hypoplastic condition of the conjunctiva. So that thick fold is caused due to the degeneration and the hypoplastic growth of the conjunctiva which is due to the etiology as we already learned. In the hot dry climates we can note the pterygium and this subconjunctival tissue undergoes elastotic degeneration and it proliferates as vascularized granulation tissue under the epithelium which ultimately encroaches upon the cornea. The corneal epithelium the Bowman's layer and the superficial stroma are destroyed in the case of pterygium. Coming to the clinical features, this pterygium is more commonly seen in elderly males because of their outdoor work. It may be unilateral or bilateral. So in this image, so in this image, you can note the pterygium that is here on the nasal side in both eyes. It presents as a triangular fold of the conjunctiva encroaching the cornea in the area of the palpebral aperture which is usually seen on the nasal side but it can also occur on the temporal side. So here will be the pupil or the palpebral aperture. It usually occurs on the nasal side more than the temporal side. Deposition of the iron is sometimes seen in the corneal epithelium anterior to the advancing head of the pterygium. And this deposition of the iron is called as the stalker's line. So this is the important point. It will also be asked in the viva. So we will learn about the parts of the pterygium to know the head of the pterygium. The parts of the fully developed pterygium. There is a head which encroaches upon the cornea. There is a neck in the limbal area that means below to the head. A body that extends between the limbus and the canthus. So you can see here. This is the body and a cap which is semi-lunar whitish infiltrate just into the front of the head. So these are all the parts of the pterygium, types of pterygium. Depending upon the progression, there are two types of pterygiums, progressive pterygium and a regressive pterygium. As the name indicates, progressive. Progressive meaning it progresses. So in this case, the pterygium is thick, fleshy and vascular because of the vascularity it progresses or it grows it have few infiltrates in the cornea which forms the cap of the pterygium so the cap of the pterygium is only seen in the progressive type remember this point and the second type is the regressive type regression regression means atrophy or stoppage so the regressive pterygium is thin atrophic and attenuated with very little vascularity. So the lack of vascularity regresses the pterygium. There is no cap or no infiltrates seen in this type. Ultimately, this type of pterygium becomes membranous but this membrane never disappears. So this is the progressive pterygium in which you can note the vascularity and the growth and this is the regressive pterygium in which you can note less vascularity and it becomes membranous. Symptoms Pterygium is usually asymptomatic but the growth of this pterygium may lead to visual disturbances that is when it encroaches the pupillary area or due to the corneal astigmatism. Occasionally diplopia is also noted. Complications occur when there are long-standing cases of pterygium. Cystic degeneration and infection and rarely neoplastic change can occur.
coming to the differential diagnosis pterygium must be differentiated from pseudo pterygium so here the word pseudo indicates false so let us learn about the pseudo pterygium the pseudo pterygium is a fold of bulbar conjunctiva which is attached to the cornea it is formed due to the adhesion of the chemosed bulbar conjunctiva to the marginal corneal ulcer it usually occurs following chemical burns of the eye so remember guys the pseudo pterygium is formed by the by the adhesion of the bulbar conjunctiva which is chemosed following usually chemical burns of the eye when the ulcer occurs on the cornea that is the marginal corneal ulcer the bulbar conjunctiva forms adhesion and this leads to formation of a pseudo pterygium so this will be the differential diagnosis of the pterygium so this table differentiate pterygium from the pseudo pterygium the etiology of the pterygium it is a degenerative process the pseudo pterygium is a inflammatory process coming to the age the pterygium usually seen in elderly and pseudo pterygium can occur at any age that means the injury or the trauma can occur at any age that forms the pseudo pterygium site pterygium always situated in the palpable aperture whereas pseudo pterygium can occur at any site stages the pterygium have progressive and regressive stage or a stationary stage in which no change is observed the pseudo pterygium is always stationary the probe test this probe test can differentiate the pterygium from the pseudo pterygium in the probe test in cases of pterygium the probe cannot be passed underneath the pterygium because the whole layer is fixed to the conjunctiva and the cornea in case of pterygium whereas in cases of pseudo pterygium the probe can be passed under the neck of the pseudo pterygium because the adhesions are only noted on the margin of the cornea and the bulbar conjunctiva here the probe can be passed easily in coming to the treatment of the pterygium it is the surgical excision it is usually done for cosmetic reasons if it encroaches upon the pupillary area the surgical excision may be required due to correction of diplopia which is caused due to interference in the ocular movements and the complication of the treatment is the recurrence which is seen in 30 to 50% of the cases to reduce the recurrence of the pterygium we can use mitomycin c and the surgical excision with bates clera can be done the surgical excision with free conjunctival autograft or in recurrent recalcitrant pterygium the surgical excision which is coupled with lamellar keratectomy and the lamellar keratoplasty can be done so this is a surgical technique to excise the pterygium after applying the topical anesthesia the eye is cleansed draped and exposed using a universal eye speculum the head of the pterygium is lifted and it is dissected of the cornea very meticulously so here is the dissection of the head the main mass of pterygium is then separated from the sclera which lies underneath and the conjunctiva superficially the pterygium tissue is then excised taking care not to damage the underlying medial rectus muscle and the hemostasis is achieved by the episcleral tissue which is exposed and cauterized thoroughly cauterization leads to the hemostasis in simple excision the conjunctiva is sutured back to cover the sclera like this and in the bare sclera technique some part of the conjunctiva is excised and its edges are sutured to the underlying episcleral tissue leaving some bare part of the sclera near to the limbus so llat or the limbal conjunctival autograft transplantatic technique is the most effective technique to manage the pterygium so guys this is all about the pterygium the types of pterygium pathology etiology difference between pseudo pterygium and the pterygium and the treatment if you like this video do subscribe to my channel